In a story few could have foreseen, yesterday Apple was forced to lobotomize its game-changing new AI feature that summarizes the news, because it's been hallucinating world events that never actually happened. Like did you hear Netanyahu was arrested, or Juicy Smollett's conviction was overturned, or that there's poo in your underwear? It, two of those stories are not actually true, but if you have an iPhone, you might be consuming artificial misinformation. The issue became so bad that a mainstream reporter from the Washington Post said it's wildly irresponsible that Apple doesn't turn off summaries for the news app until it gets a bit better at this AI thing. Apple actually listened and is temporarily turning off new summaries, and in the future will put a disclaimer on every notification that it may contain errors. I'm dumbfounded that Apple intelligence is not all that smart, but it's not even close to the stupidest thing going on in tech right now. And by the end of this video, you might think we're entering a singularity of stupidity. It is January 18th, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. Apple intelligence, not to be confused with artificial intelligence, is an incredibly innovative and perfectly balanced product. In fact, it's so good that there's now a subreddit dedicated to Apple intelligence fails. One thing it tries to do is read your text messages and summarize them. It's rarely useful, but on the bright side, when it gets things wrong, it can be pretty hilarious. Like when you find out you have multiple emergencies like a house break in, a fire, and a lost Fortnite match. But it also summarizes the news, and that's how I learned that tech bros are being overthrown by minority coalitions. To be fair though, Apple intelligence is self-aware and can recognize a poorly executed feature. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for tech bro mogul Mark Zuckerberg. People freaked out last week when he said they're building AI mid-level engineers, and then a couple days ago he put his money where his mouth is and laid off the bottom 5% of low performers at Meta. And in a leaked internal memo, it said they're looking at an intense year ahead. It'd call me crazy, but I don't trust this guy. Disclaimer, the clip I'm about to show you is hard to watch, where Mark Zuckerberg is accused of lying about his bow hunting skills to look cool in front of Joe Rogan. What kind of bow do you have? Gosh, I didn't get to do it this season, but um... Do you know the company that makes it? Not off the top of my head. I have, I a few. have to know. Yeah, to no, know this, is embarrassing. this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Did you get someone to coach you? Did yeah, you, yeah. Who coached you? Um, it's basically a bunch of the guys who, who um, you know, help run security around the ranch. Okay. Yeah. As awkward as that was, maybe he's not lying, but even if he does replace all mid-level engineers with AI, you can still work for a different tech billionaire named Elon Musk who's looking for human engineers. And no degree is required, just show him the code. I'm looking for a job myself, so I sent him my code on localhost 8080. I haven't heard anything back yet, so wish me luck. Elon has had an interesting week. Over 200,000 Teslas were recalled for rearview camera issues, but Elon's most embarrassing fail this week was that he was called out by streamer Asmongold for not being as good as he says he is at video games. He, there's no way he played that account. You see, Elon is one of the top ranked players in the world at Path of Exile, and also Diablo 4. But according to experts of this game, this account is highly sus, and very likely a boosted account where Elon pays someone to level up in the game for him. After Asmongold streamed about this and brought attention to the situation, Elon then got really mad and took away his blue check mark, and then leaked their private DMs. It's an incredibly petty and stupid situation, so let's get back to something serious like AI. One of the big tech CEOs that I hate the least is Saudi Nutella. He transformed Microsoft from a company that virtually every developer hated into a company that now no developer can avoid with tools like VS Code, GitHub, and so on. But now they're shifting focus and formed a new division called Core AI, where the purpose is to create AI agents, which they expect to be a bigger paradigm shift than GUIs, internet servers, or cloud-native databases. Speaking of agents, Amazon has also been desperately trying to get agents implemented into its Alexa spy device, but the darn thing just keeps hallucinating. Amazon wanted to launch this thing back in October, but it's still delayed to this day. But if you made the mistake of opening Twitter recently, you'll notice there's all kinds of vague hype coming out of OpenAI around artificial superintelligence. There's like this mass delusion among tech bros that artificial superintelligence is about to come. And that's despite the fact that all of OpenAI's recent launches, like Sora and O1, have been largely buggy and disappointing. If they had anything close to an AGI, let alone an ASI, they wouldn't need all these job listings for software engineers. Artificial superintelligence will never come, and I'm willing to die on that hill, because if I'm right, I'm right, and if I'm wrong, we'll all be dead anyway. There is one new product that came out yesterday though that decided not to go the AI route, and that's the Nintendo Switch too. Nintendo released a trailer for it yesterday, and while many Nintendo fans are excited, shareholders are not impressed and the stock dropped after the launch. It appears the Switch 2 is not going to be some revolutionary new product, but really just more of the same with some much needed better hardware. But another massive failure in tech this week is TikTok. If ByteDance doesn't sell TikTok by Sunday, January 19th, it'll be banned in the United States and you could go to jail for using it. American TikTok users are already posting their heartfelt goodbye videos, What's most hilarious, though, is that many are learning Mandarin, so they can go use the Chinese alternative app, Red Note. But sadly, what they're finding is that the Chinese don't even want these refugees. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.